Okay, 13, we got uh, Fredo on TV. Uh, Roger, Houston. What we plan to do for you today is turn out in the uh, spaceship or uh, Odyssey and take you on through from Odyssey uh, into the tunnel into Aquarius and show you a little bit of uh, the landing uh, vehicle. And uh, your TV operator is now resting on the center couch looking at uh, Fred Hayes, whose head is now just about at the beginning of the tunnel and his back is against the or equipment the optical uh, area, and Fred will uh, now uh, transport himself into the tunnel and into the uh, spaceship Aquarius. You know, one thing I noted, uh, Jack, when I first came across there, that uh, starting uh, upright in the command module and uh, heading down in the Aquarius, uh, there's a little bit of an orientation change that uh, we saw it once uh, in the water tank. Uh, it's still pretty unusual. I find myself uh, now uh, standing with my head on the floor when I get down inside the limb. That's a great picture, Jim. Uh, you got the light just right. One of the nice things, uh, Jack, uh, particularly for a novice like myself, is the uh, the ease of uh, moving around in here. And, uh, of course, as you know from working with the uh, command module simulator, it's really quite a boon to uh, have zero gravity as an aid. It's pretty uh, confining, really, at one G to move around very much in there, and it's uh, quite easy in this environment. Uh, the lamp, as you can see, it uh, looked pretty clean. I found a couple of loose washers, about it, and the uh, a little plastic cap off the uh, sequence camera had come loose, and I found it uh, lodged over by the uh, ED panel. Okay. Uh, right under... Uh, Jim now, he's uh, actually standing on a uh, what looks to be a can here, and uh, for the sake of all the people back there, uh, housed inside this can is the, uh, the lab method engine, or uh, hopefully you can see my hand I'm resting on top of right now, the engine that uh, we used to get off of the moon. Immediately uh, adjacent to uh, the uh, engine cover here, I have my hand on a, a white box now, which uh, has been shown before. Uh, this uh, happens to be uh, Jim's flip, uh, or the backpack, which will uh, supply oxygen and uh, water for cooling while on the lunar surface. Uh, this uh, device uh, we hope to uh, make use of for uh, Plan four hours and possibly up to as much as uh, five hours. Right, uh, right behind the plant, uh, a couple of square packages I now have my hand on here. One here and one right below are our OPSs, which are in essence the emergency oxygen supplies, which are good for some uh, 40 to 45 minutes. These are we uh, get ready to uh, mount up and head outside, uh, we'll be placed up on top of the cliff. Uh, the second backpack is uh, mounted down on the uh, limb floor, uh, and we'll position uh, right between the, the two of us. I have my hand on it uh, at this time. Roger, Fred, we see it. Uh, the picture's coming through real good, and uh, your description is good. We see uh, Jim's got the camera oriented uh, the way we like to look at it. So we'll keep talking. Okay, I guess uh, everybody.
money is uh, pretty much envisioned the uh, space program has been uh, all uh, a lot of exotic electronics, and uh, certainly a lot of it is. But I uh, thought I'd bring out a couple items here uh, in conjunction with the flip. Uh, after the first DVA, uh, to get a very accurate measurement of the amount of water that's left in the blisters, we're going to make use of uh, this bag I'm showing now to uh, collect the remaining water out of the blisters and see uh, just how much we really did have left. And uh, hopefully on uh, future missions to be uh, able to extend uh, safely uh, the allowable time on these units uh, even a little further. And uh, my other hand, I have the uh, mechanism by which we uh, determine just how much uh, water we really have in this bag. And I guess this uh, an app description for this device would be a uh, fish scale. And uh, you can see I'm weighing myself right now, and uh, says I weigh uh, actually less than zero right now. Guess it's calibration at two bit. That'll be the day. I think even you would weigh zero here, Jack.
Start the uh, detail on this one, Jack. Say again, Fred. Uh, can you see any detail on this picture now, or am I blocking out too much of the sunlight? That's affirmative. Uh, we got a good picture of the lever there, and uh, it's coming through loud and clear. Okay. Okay, uh, Jack, well, uh, Fred's putting away my uh, helmet. You're looking over into Fred's station now. Now, how's this picture? Is it okay before the land adjust it? Uh, we have a hunch that uh, the setting might be in peak, but we recommend uh, average on the AOC if you haven't got it there already. We're in average, Jack. Okay, and uh, we're getting a good picture of the LMP side with the uh, beta over there. Hey, Jack, uh, one question on the command box here. Uh, do I, I have the DAP right now, a wide dead band. Do you want me to begin setting up zero dead band and knowing the rates to start PTC again? Stand by, Jack. Uh, what I'm uh, fishing out now, Jack, is another uh, new piece of hardware that uh, uh, we're taking along this time uh, as a result of some comments made on uh, uh, Apollo 12 flight. What uh, Fred is opening up is a drink bag that we poison of our uh, neck ring uh, that uh, will allow us to drink while we're on the lunar surface. Uh, they feed an owl does not have that in uh, Apollo 12, and they consequently got very thirsty. Uh, but we hope to alleviate that situation by having uh, our own little uh, bag of water, which uh, with very little effort we can uh, have a sip or two while we're looking around and uh, in our geology work. So, uh, if you hear any funny noises, uh, it's just uh, probably the drink bag. Fred, uh, the bag's empty. Now looking through our optical device, uh, it's an instrument in which to uh, align our platform. And uh, Fred is now looking into it uh, just to see uh, what kind of an outside picture he might be able to get. We might be able to use a TV camera to uh, put through our optical instrument to the outside of the command module. A few minutes ago, while we first came in, we did manage to uh, look to the outside of the, of the side hatch of the command module to our uh, optical instrument. Stand by, we'll try and see what we can do here. Roger, Jim, break. Uh, Jack, we'd like you to stay in the uh, dead band you're now in, and uh, we'll make a change when the uh, TV is over. Another thing we'd like you to do is check your uh, pitch and yaw on your high gain meter uh, so we can compare it with what we're seeing down here. Uh, 
Okay, uh, Jack, have you got that uh, picture now? Uh, Fred, about one quarter of our screen is uh, lighted, and uh, it's impossible to uh, determine what you're looking at right now. Maybe you could give us a little verbal description. Okay, it's uh, looking through the uh, AOT in uh, position uh, four, uh, right rear, and uh, we're looking back uh, toward the... Uh, over the uh, side hatch at the uh, amp side of the uh, service console. Okay, is uh, the, the two dots a picture, Jack? Uh, you think the f stop open may help? No, Fred, it's got to be centered up a little bit. That's uh, primarily what you have to do. Jack, uh, we can't turn it up anymore because uh, the uh, side hatch is only in one part of the AOT. The rest of that blank that you see is really uh, uh, space. Okay, we'll try another one then. A little better center, Dave. In fact, the only other one we have that uh, shows uh, the whole picture. Uh, we're on the forward D10 of the AOT now, position two. And uh, you should be seeing uh, something uh, familiar like a radar antenna. Okay, we see you moving the uh, camera up to the AOT land, and we got a real good picture now. Jack, I'm looking out the uh, right window now, and uh, not too far off in the distance now, you can see the uh, the objective. And I'll zoom in on it here a little and see if it brings it in better. Uh, beginning to look a little bigger now. Uh, uh, you can see quite distinctly uh, some of the features uh, with the naked eye. And uh, so far, I guess I have to even agree with uh, Jim that it's uh, still looking pretty uh, gray uh, with white spots. Okay, Okay, Fred, we're getting a good uh, picture of your destination there. Okay, 
And Jack, you've been looking at the uh, at Fred's workshop now, and you can see the uh, the board guide the computer. And over there, in the tucked away in his uh, armrest, uh, is our activation checklist, which we'll be using very shortly. Up at the top of the window, we have uh, our uh, camera already mounted, uh, ready for uh, the photograph of the descent. And now, Fred's uh, engaged in his favorite pastime, I found out on this flight so far. He's not in the food locker, is he? That's his second favorite pastime. He's Bringing his hammock for sleep on the lunar surface now to try it out to see what it's going to be like. Roger, uh, sleeping and then eating. It's kind of difficult here, uh, Jack, uh, getting into a hammock in zero D. I'm not uh, sure if I keep floating away from it or uh, it keeps moving away from me. If you notice a few things floating around, uh, we have found, found just about one or two watches occasionally. And for the benefit of those that may wonder uh, where uh, Jim sleeps. Uh, it's a little difficult to rig his hammock in here uh, right now uh, with the hatch open, but his uh, runs laterally in this direction, uh, 4 a.m. So uh, he has the uh, upper berth, and uh, I, uh, I get the lower berth. And uh, now while uh, Fred's uh, taking his hammock down and he's done it, I might give you some idea of the sort of confusion of attitude since there is no up or down. And I'm uh, situated on top of the Aston engine uh, just at the uh, entrance to the tunnel. I'll reverse the camera 180 degrees and go from Fred, look through the tunnel again back at Odyssey, and we might pick up part of Jack. There he is. We see him. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, for the benefit of the television viewers, uh, we've just about completed our little uh, inspection of Aquarius, and uh, now we're proceeding through the hatch again, and through the tunnel, and going back to the Odyssey. Okay, Jim, it's been a great show so far.
And finally, uh, Jack let me back into the Odyssey as we slide on through the tunnel here. Yeah, we sure are. We got a uh, good picture of the skipper there. Okay, well, we can show you now, uh, and the benefit, uh, we've got the drogue on uh, Fred's uh, couch in the command module right now, so we can put it temporarily uh, while we're taking out the uh, on Aquarius. And underneath his uh, couch, we've got the uh, probe stowed, quite a big coverage device. Yeah, we'll do a shot of it for you. We're looking now at our uh, probe that we uh, place uh, on the nose of uh, the Z. Uh, it's a very heavy thing, but uh, of course, in uh, zero gravity, it uh, weighs nothing, and it's much easier to move around. As a matter of fact, both uh, Fred and Jack commented, as many people said, uh, of how much uh, bigger the spacecraft appears uh, in actual flight uh, when you have such ease of movement compared to our simulators, which are extremely rather difficult. Okay, we're seeing a good picture of the probe there, uh, Jim, and uh, looks like the characters uh, shaved before the show this time. Well, Fred said he had to keep up his TV image. Yeah, that may be uh, my first and last time, though, Jack. It took Fred one hour to shave. Okay, Jim, uh, we're seeing the tape recorder now, and uh, just by the way, how long do you expect to keep the TV on this evening? Well, whenever you stand by one. Yeah, I got to put the uh, Kevin reprint valve in there, Jack. Every time he 
Okay, Jim, uh, it's been a real good TV show. Uh, we think we ought to conclude it from here now. Uh, what do you think? Roger, sounds good. And this is the crew of Apollo 13. We wish everybody there a uh, nice evening. And uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back to a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night.